Hello, welcome to everyone to this webinar. This is Paolo Scarnizio, Technical Marketing Manager at ST, with me, Vic Stefanek from the application team. We are very excited to talk about STM32WB as a wireless expansion of the STM32 family. 2.4 GHz, multi-core, multi-protocol, powerful wireless MCU to support Zigbee, Bluetooth Low Energy, Thread, and proprietary stack protocols. Today, we will focus on Zigbee and Bluetooth Low Energy. You can find a lot of additional information on st.com slash stm32wb. So, let's start with the agenda for today. We start from a product and ecosystem offer. You will follow two live demonstrations showing Zigbee out of the box and Zigbee plus Bluetooth Low Energy concurrent mode. We'll touch the main takeaways from this presentation. And finally, at the end of this webinar, our technical expert and me will be pleasured to answer to your question. So let's start. When it comes to connect objects within a short range, we can distinguish basically two approaches. Point-to-point -point or point-to-multipole communication with smartphones and other wireless devices where Bluetooth Low Energy plays a strong role nowadays. And the more complex mesh network uh, where we have IEEE 802.15.4 MAC-based stacks uh, such as Zigbee and Thread. Or uh, we can have Bluetooth Low Energy 5 mesh or proprietary protocols as well. In many cases, the mesh network must be accessible from a smartphone like in the picture. The two approaches have different targets, complexities, and advantages that are end product dependent. Let's see how LTN32WB can address both approaches and more. The STM32WX MCUs brings one connectivity to the rich STM32 MCU portfolio. The STM32WX series cover both gigahertz as well as 2.4 gigahertz frequency range operation. They are easy to use, reliable, and perfectly tailored for a wide range of industrial and consumer applications. Let's focus today on the STM32WB 2.4 GHz wireless MCU. The STM32WB wireless MCU series features a two-in-one architecture built around two totally independent cores, a Cortex-M4S application MCU based on the best-in-class ultra-low-power STM32L4 and a radio transceiver based on a Cortex M0 Plus to manage high-level stack protocols such as A22.15.4, MAC-based ones, and Bluetooth Low Energy. Only one deeply integrating and highly cost-efficient system on chip with enhanced security features. STM32WB solutions are thus a perfect match between real-time and highly power-efficient applications. The STM32WB platform is ideal fit for RF engineers looking for more than just a radio device, where PCB size and cost care more than everything. Looking at the ST portfolio that offers Zigbee and Bluetooth Low Energy today, we have four devices available now. The superset, the STM32WB55, and the STM32WB50 devices. STM32WB35 is a reduced cost version available today. A video line device is available as well today, STM32WB30. These have the lowest cost ST Micro Bluetooth Low Energy Plus 802.15.4 solution. Let's jump a bit into the STM32WB block diagram. The innovative architecture of the STM32WB MCUs 
is based on two totally independent cores optimized for real-time execution. This enables flexible resource usage and power management for a lower BOM cost and a better user experience. 64 megahertz Cortex-M4S is dedicated to the customer application, while a 32 megahertz Cortex-M0 Plus is fully dedicated to the radio protocol stack and time-critical tasks. STM 32WBMCU has been developed with the same technology as our ultra-low power STM 32L4 microcontrollers. It provides the same digital and analog peripherals suitable for applications requiring an extended battery life and complex functionalities. STM 32WBX5 wireless MCU are available in multiple packages up to 7x7 7 7 VGA 129 and different memory sizes up to 1 megabyte slash 256k byte RAM. It includes a wide variety of communication features, including a practical crystalless USB 2.0 full speed interface, audio support, an LCD driver, touch sensing up to 72 GPIOs, some of them 5 volt tolerant, code SPI with execution in place, and an integrated switching mode power system, SMPS, for power consumption optimization and multiple low power modes to maximize battery life. An integrated balloon is available as well to further reduce complexity beyond cost and space on PCB. STM 32WB55 can run protocols in concurrent mode, as we will see later. The STM 32WB55X operates on the range from minus 40 up to 105 Celsius. The STM 32WBX0 value line focused instead on the essentials and offers a feature-optimized, cost-effective solution for developers. It enables entry-level solution, features essential peripheral set with a reduced temperature range. A dual-core processing leads to a lot of benefits. Let's dig into some of them we at ST are considering as key differentiators. Independent radioactivity means the radio core works totally independently from the cortex M4F domain. This allows all routines and time-critical RF stack-related job to run on cortex M0+. Energy saving mode is active when neither cortex M4F nor cortex M0+ have tasks to run. With 256K by RAM retention and RTC running, system goes down to 2.1 micrograms, still performing a 5 microsecond fast wake up. On the other hand, the application core Cortex M4F runs the main application activities independently from Cortex M0. For example, for computing data sensors. Flexible Cortex M4F CPU speed up to 64 megahertz allows to set up the right computational power. The dedicated interfaces such as batch acquisition mode, BAM, allows peripheral data transfer through DMA with CPU and flash turned off. And when both cores are running in parallel, the overall power consumption is as low as 50 microamp megahertz. Application MCU Cortex M4F and radio MCU running in parallel communicate through an inter-process communication channel. Last, when the system has to shut down, for example, for battery saving, we can count on a power consumption of 50 nanoamps only. In addition to its wireless and ultra-low power features, STM 32WB microcontrollers embed security features which reduce device maintenance needs and ensure and devices are trustable and cannot be cloned. Other security functions, such as 256-bit AES hardware encryption, PC-ROP read-write protection, JTAG Fuse 
and public key cryptography with an elliptic curve encryption engine are available. The firmware upgrade services, FUS, the Secure Boot and Secure Firmware Upgrade, SDSFU, together with PC ROP and PKA feature, ensure secure wireless stack update on the field, secure application firmware update, encryption key management, and code protection. It's worth to highlight that ST is fully committed on releasing new version of the protocol stack fully back compatible with the previous version to minimize the development effort, if any. Wireless stack firmware are provided encrypted and signed by ST, while it's up to customers double sign the package when needed. Here is a summary of the entire portfolio of the STM 32WB devices we have today and to be released in mass production by Q4 2020. As we have done with the STM32 devices, we have created a large portfolio with multiple flash, RAM, and packages options. With these offerings, we have a device that is suitable for most customer applications. We have not touched on the STM32 WB15 and WB10 devices represented on the bottom left pink box. These will be in production in Q2 2021 and offer the lowest cost dual core Bluetooth low energy solution from ST. The module for the STM32 WB55 will be released in early 2021 and the module based on the WB15 will be released in the first half of 2021. Both models will be certified and based on the same ecosystem uh, offerings we have for the WB55. Having a look at the mesh network solutions available today, the STM32WB is the only ST solution that can address all of them. Bluetooth mesh has been around for some time, but only recently has customers taking a closer look at it. Theoretically, the maximum number is 32 K nodes. Bluetooth mesh networks have the advantage of enabling smartphone connections natively and an over-the-air data rate of one megabit per second. ZigBee and Thread are based on IEEE 802.15.4 MAC, which has an over-the-air data rate of 250 kilobit per second. ZigBee is the most major mesh network standard out of the two. ZigBee has a large following of companies behind the standard. The theoretical limit of ZigBee is 65K nodes, even if, if the largest network we know up to date counts 700 nodes. Thread is the newest mesh solution. The theoretical limit of Thread is 16K nodes. 802.15.4 is well known and based on the IEEE 802.15.4 MAC layer command. With this standard set of commands, any company can implement their own mesh network. Maximum node limit is difficult to estimate and highly dependent on the implementation. Today, we focus on ZigBee mesh. What does ZigBee mean? ZigBee is a term that means a few things, but here is what we need to focus on within ST. It refers to the ZigBee Alliance, which has 400 plus company members. It refers to the protocol stack, ZigBee Pro 2017. It also refers to the ZigBee 3.0 application layer and associated cluster library. Overall, when a customer mentions uh, ZigBee, it means we can support it with the STM32WB. And here is some exciting to share with you from the ZigBee Alliance. In January of this year, the ZigBee Alliance announced that ST has joined the ZigBee Board of Directors. We are very proud of that. 
When we look at the entire ZigBee stack offering, it has technologies that are as follows. The dot, this is a technology we do not support within ST, which is okay, as dot dot is not widely supported. Whereas for C, this is mainly used in remote controller applications. At this point, we do not support this standard. Jupyter Mesh, it is an initiative created by the ZigBee Alliance to address IPv6. This stack is very new and not widely supported. ST uh, supports 6 lopan on stm 32 wb The main points we support are ZigBee Pro, which includes uh, ZigBee 3.0 and smart energy application stacks. With this support, we can capture almost all of the ZigBee customer needs today from an application standpoint. We also offer Bluetooth Low Energy plus ZigBee concurrent operation. This means that uh, the STN32WD can interface to both Bluetooth Low Energy and ZigBee networks at the same time. This has always been a drawback to ZigBee networks, but with the WB, this is no longer the case. But the biggest advantage we have with uh, the STN32 WP is the STN32 ecosystem. We have multiple software tools and lots of embedded software with iOS and Android applications available as well. STN32 Cube IDE and STN32 Cube Programmer are becoming the go-to IDE and programming tool for STN32 devices. STN32 Cube MX provides customers with the best configuration environment on the market today. STN32 Cube WB includes a lot of examples with the Bluetooth Low Energy plus Thread, uh, Bluetooth Low Energy plus ZB, and the 802.15.4 stacks available to customers. We also have numerous functions, packs, that enable audio over Bluetooth, video over Bluetooth, and more to come. The WB also interfaces with all of the well-known ST apps, such as uh, BLE Profile, BLE Sensor, BLE StarNet, and BLE Mesh. STM Cube Monitor RF brings the ability to monitor and test Bluetooth Low Energy and 802.15.4 on the WB, giving customers the ability to test their, their wireless connectivity without specialized hardware or software. Lastly, STM32 Cube Monitor Power allows you to measure real-time current consumption of your application running on the STM32 WB. Overall, the STM32 WB is backed by the world-in-class STN32 ecosystem, which is the best on the market today. When we look at the evaluation board for the WD, we have the Nucleo Pack, which comes with a Nucleo board and a USB dongle. Discovery boards are coming as well. Ecosystem-wise, you can rely on a complete tool suite for your STN32 WB. That's all from my marketing presentation. Let me hand over to Vit, who will enter in technical details and then zone. Thank you. Thank you, Paolo. Well, ZigBee is not new, but also definitely not legacy network communication protocol. It has evolved over already more than 20 years and got better standardized recently. ZigBee is nowadays one of the most popular IoT mesh protocols worldwide. In the preferred centralized configuration, the ZigBee network has always single coordinator which starts the network, defines the communication channel, assigns addressing scheme and holds full list of neighbors and routers. Typically also keeps the role to permit other devices to join the network. Router is the keystone of the ZigBee network. Routers are responsible for routing, so to find the best way for the message from the source to destination throughout the network. Coordinator works as a router too, 
but a router only node is not responsible for the extra job managed by the coordinator. And device is not responsible for routing and network extension and is mainly like a user on the network. And device is always connected to only a single router. And device is then typically so called reduced function device. Both router and coordinator are then so called full function devices. Zigbee stack is split in three main blocks. MAC and physical layer is based on IEEE ARN 215.4. Then there is the Zigbee protocol stack managing the network and transport layer, including security, defining all the routing and forwarding rules. And Zigbee also specifies the application layer, mainly by so-called Zigbee cluster library and defining base device behavior. Zigbee is a low bandwidth short range communication technology capable to interconnect thousands of nodes in a single network. Now let's have a look on what is the main benefit of the dual core architecture of STM32WB. The Zigbee stack is split between the two cores in the following way. All the parts related to the protocol and which are mandatory to be supported all the routine tasks and time critical tasks are managed autonomously by the ARM Cortex M0 Plus core and delivered in encrypted certified binary form. Application layer and the application itself is then executed on the CM4S side. So the user has the full performance, full control and is not limited for his application implementation. ST Zigbee solution targets to be a complete Zigbee solution, providing implementation of all the mostly used features defined by the standard and with extensive and extendable Zigbee cluster library. All the features listed here can be already found in the SDK, mostly accompanied by an example. If you will have a look at our SDK, so the STM32QWB firmware package, it contains simply all the blocks necessary for any development in a single box. Peripheral drivers, middleware besides RF protocols, or also for USB or touch sensing, and especially dozens of examples for all peripherals and included middleware. As was already mentioned, the RF stack binaries are provided in encrypted binary form only. And here you can see the actual full set of RS tech solutions available in the latest STM32Cube WB firmware package. Besides multiple variants for DLE and thread, including low level radio drivers, we do have today also a full set of stack variants for ZigBee and also an interesting combination of being able to operate both DLE and ZigBee stacks in a single application. I would like to highlight here the release notes, which will provide you all details about the available stack options, included features, and information how to install them. Inside these release notes, we provide a regular changes log and bug fixes list. We maintain backwards compatibility of our RF stacks. So in case of a bug fix, the user can just take the newer stack and doesn't need to do changes in his own application. If we have a look at the application examples for Zigbee, we do have examples covering all the stack features and most important use cases. The Zigbee examples highlighted are covering the specific scenarios like different network configurations, commissioning strategies, Zigbee persistence data management, sleepy end device implementation and handling, and so on. Regarding the documentation, here is a full list of application notes covering both hardware and software subjects of STM32WB and generally RF application development specifics. 
Those which are highlighted were found useful by every single STM32WB user. We have also already a bunch of Zigbee related documentation. For Zigbee, we have a getting started guide describing the communication protocol basics, stack architecture, and its specifics on STM32WB. We have also the Zigbee SDK API reference guide describing all functions exposed to the application core. We have also documentation related purely to our Zigbee cluster library implementation and both to how to use it and also how to extend it if needed. Let's jump on the first demo of today. We will try to run a Hello Zigbee Vault application. We have today available the PNUCLO WB55 pack as our main hardware development and evaluation platform. It consists of so-called Nucleo board with specific design tunes for RF needs and a USB dongle. On the Nucleo board, besides the target MC area and RF path, completely accessible pinout and simple user interface, you can find there also an STLink version 2.1, providing also virtual COM port interface besides standard debugger capabilities. On the dongle, there is no onboard debugger. The target device can be flashed using bootloader via USB type A connector. The dongle can be used primarily as a companion board for Nucleo, mainly for evaluation, but still with dozens of benefits and can be used even as a simple RF module during development. As a Hello Zigbee Vault example, we think the best is the simple Zigbee on off cluster application. We will create the smallest possible Zigbee centralized network by using both the boards available in the Nuxel pack. One board will be the on off cluster server and the other will be on off cluster client. Zigbee cluster library is based on a client server approach. USB dongle role will be a Zigbee network coordinator and Nucleo will behave as Zigbee router. In terms of functionality, the idea is that once the network is started and both nodes inside, it will be indicated by the blue LED. And we will be capable to control the red LED on the USB dongle from the Nucleo board. Before we can start to work with Zigbee, we need to highlight that the boards are coming with DME stack pre-installed. So first step should be to install the appropriate Zigbee stack version. Every single application example is accompanied by a readme.txt file and lists all requirements in terms of hardware and software configuration. To install the Zigbee stack, every single STM32WB device is coming from our factory pre-programmed by so-called FUS firmware. FUS stands for Firmware Upgrade Services. It is a secure bootloader, always present and available on CPU2, ARM Cortex M0 Plus domain, inside the secure flash memory area. The RF stack can be installed then by using SWD or JTAG interface or other listed communication interfaces. Our flashing utility called STM32Q Programmer has full capabilities to operate this server upgrade mechanism. Besides documentation available, we have already posted a few online tutorials on this subject. So to summarize, to be able to run the on-off cost example, we will need to flash in both devices the Zigbee FSB stack firmware binary, and on a USB dongle, you will need to program the Zigbee on-off server coordinator example, and on the nuclear board, Zigbee on-off client rotor example, as a user application running on ARM Cortex M4F core. We will see the complete Zigbee centralized network node joining procedure going through association, transport and linky exchanges, and finally the end functionality execution. Most of the job, let's say overall process, is managed by the Zigbee stack in the ARM Cortex M0 Plus core domain. We will also check out the integrated debug capabilities, since as you could see on the previous slide, the procedures 
in a robust network, communication protocols are sometimes complex. Let's move to the lab and have a look at the example in operation. So we have moved to the lab to have a look at the ZigBee Hello World example from our SDK package. So we will create a tiny ZigBee network. I have here one STM32WB nuclear pack. And as I already said, the out of the box demo preloaded on the boards is for BLE. So there is BLE stack and some BLE examples preloaded on the board. There is the BLE peer-to-peer -peer server example loaded on the nuclear board and BLE peer-to-peer -peer client example loaded on the USB dongle. So together you have both BLE peripheral and BLE central device which can be connected together. I can just power up the nuclear board and on the phone I can open the STBLE sensor APK. STBLE sensor APK is our main application for all our BLE examples we have in our SDK. It is available on both Google Play and App Store. When I do scan, I can easily see that there is the peer-to-peer -peer server advertising and I can connect to it. And I can control the blue LED from the phone and when I press the switch one button on the nuclear, I am getting back to the notifications. But that is not what this demo should be about. This demo should be about Zigbee. I just wanted to show you what is loaded in the boards when you open up the package and we will need to know this functionality and STBLE sensor APK for the second demo later. Before we can download and run the Zigbee examples, we need to replace the BLE stack for the Zigbee stack. As we have already discussed for the Zigbee on-off cluster client and server example with Zigbee centralized network setup, we need a Zigbee FFD stack loaded, at least on the board which will run the coordinator node. But for simplicity, we will use the FFD stack on both the boards. I will not show uh, in this demo how to replace the RF stack and eventually upgrade the firmware upgrade services firmware, but I will point you where you can find nice tutorials. So if you will just open the stm 32 cubewb SDK folder, you can see the text file called how to program wireless stacks. This will point you to the release notes HTML file in the stm 32 wb coprocessor wireless binaries folder, where you can find a step-by-step -step guide on how to replace or upgrade the wireless stack. There are also nice video tutorials available. Just search for STM32WB FUS keywords. The videos will lead you throughout the process. I have here already a nuclear and dongle with the Zigbee FFD stack binaries installed. And on the USB dongle I have the Zigbee on-off server coordinator application loaded. And on the Nucleo, I have the Zigbee on-off client router application loaded. I will first plug in the USB dongle, since we first need to have the coordinator which will start the Zigbee network. The blue LED indicates that the network has successfully started. Now I plug in the Nucleo board. The blue LED turns on after a while also. That indicates it successfully joined the network. Now when I press the switch 1 button on the nuclear, the red LED will toggle on the USB dongle. On the dongle we have application implementing on-off cluster server and the on-off or toggle commands are simply controlling the red LED state. The on-off or toggle commands can be sent from the on-off cluster client running on the nuclear board. The complete functionality and how to make it all running is described in the readme.txt file related to each example. We can now have a look at the communication in Wireshark. I have here a pre-configured IEEE ARN 215.4 sniffer already. It's listening at channel 13. I could read that uh, we are using channel 13 from the example code. And let's reproduce one more time. I switch both boards off. I will start the session in Wireshark. I turn on the USB dongle. I can see that the coordinator is advertising the network. I turn on the nuclear board 
and I can see that it initiated the joining procedure. I can see the association, request response, network key delivery, device announcement, no descriptor request and response, a link key delivery from the trust center. And finally, when I press the button, I can see the uh, on off toggle commands and default responses. We can also have a look in the debug terminals. Every Zigbee example provides uh, the possibility to propagate debug traces, which can help you to see what is happening even without a sniffer and can help you to debug your own code. There are several levels of debug traces that can be changed depending on the situation. So you can filter out some too low level traces and keep for example only errors or warnings or only the application layer traces. I have here two TerraTerm windows, one for the USB dongle, which implements a virtual COM port directly running on the STM32WB device, and one for the Nucleo, where the USART 2 is connected to the virtual COM port interface of the ST-Link version 2.1. I will switch off both boards again. In this case, I will turn on the Nucleo board first. You can see that it is periodically attempting to join the network unsuccessfully since there is no open network available at channel 13 in my lab. Now I will turn on the USB dongle the Nucleo joined the network almost immediately. Now I can press the button and see the switch one press events and on off events in the debug logs. So that was all for the first demonstration and we will move back to the presentation. As a second demo, we have prepared the BLE plus Zigbee combined operation. We speak about so-called concurrent mode. We distinguish between concurrent mode static and concurrent mode dynamic. In concurrent mode static, the switch between the protocols, in this case BLE and Zigbee, is managed by the user, and even though both sticks are present inside the device memory, only one can be operated at a time. In concurrent mode dynamic, both stacks are operated in interleaving mode. Sure, we have single antenna interface, so there can be always only one radio active at a time. But it is still possible to quite efficiently schedule the different radio tasks over the time. The most easy scenario is to have a sleepy end device on a Zigbee site and BLE beacon which is only advertising on the BLE side. The most demanding is then the Zigbee router, which should be always listening and BLE connection where the radio event duty cycle can be changing. What could be the typical use cases for a concurrent mode combining BLE plus Zigbee? It is all about the fact that any smart device today doesn't integrate support for IEEE AN215.4 radio but all of them today do support BLE. So a typical scenario would be to provide a bridge to WIPA network via BLE from a smartphone. Another would be to provide a way to integrate firmware over the air update to a Zigbee device via smartphone, especially for situations when the Zigbee device doesn't have access to cloud. Another use case would be out of band commissioning, where the phone would be used to provide the credentials. In our example, we will test the first scenario. We will run an example where we will use both our boards, Nucleo and USB dongle. And on top, we will be capable to connect by smartphone. We will have our Zigbee coordinator running on USB dongle and implementing still the ZCL on of cluster server. Then we will have BLE plus Zigbee dynamic mode tech and example running on Nucleo board. It will be both Zigbee Router implementing ZCL on of cluster client and a BLE peripheral implementing simple service accessible from smartphone. We will have a periodic communication between Nucleo and USB dongle via Zigbee network. We will simply again control the LED of the USB dongle and we will be capable to control the LED on the Nucleo via BLE from the smartphone at the same moment. Propagation of the commands from the smartphone to the Zigbee network is then just a small missing step. 
to be able to run this example, we need to have a BLE ZigBee full functional device tech on the Nucleo and the BLE ZigBee dynamic mode example from the firmware package. USB dongle stays the same as in previous demo. Let's move to the lab to see the BLE plus ZigBee concurrent mode dynamic example functionality. In the second demo, we want to show how to operate the concurrent mode dynamic example. The dongle will run again the ZigBee on-off cluster server app in coordinator role, so this board setup doesn't change and we can keep it as it is from the previous demo. The Nucleo will run the BLE ZigBee dynamic mode example, so we need to switch both the stack and the application firmware. In this case I will show you how to easily replace the stack using the STM32Q programmer GUI. I have here the STM32Q programmer opened. I will connect to the board using the SWD interface. And there is a special panel appearing only for STM32WB devices. It is the firmware upgrade services panel. I will select the BLE ZigBee FFD dynamic mode stack and from the coprocessor wireless binaries release notes I could find the target address where to install it. I will run the upgrade. It first deletes the old stack and after a while the upgrade uh, will be finished. But to save the time I have here a Nucleo which is already upgraded. Now I can program the BLE ZigBee dynamic mode example binary which I already precompiled. When finished, I will again turn on the USB dongle first. Once the blue LED is on on the dongle, I will turn on the Nucleo board. So now Nucleo again joined the network. And in this case you can see that the red LED of dongle uh, toggles every one second. It is because the app running on the Nucleo is periodically sending the on-off cluster toggle command. But there should be also BLE running on the Nucleo. So I will take the phone and open the STBLE sensor APK again. I will do scan and I can see the peer-to-peer -peer server app running nearby. I connect to it and I can now control the red LED of the Nucleo. And at the same time the on-off cluster toggle commands are still sent from the Nucleo to the USB dongle. We can have a look at that using another sniffer, in this case from Alice's, which can receive and parse both BLE and IEEE 802.15.4 packets at the same moment. The session was already recorded, so we can have a look what happened. We can see both the ARN215.4 interleaving with the BLE and in this case there is higher traffic on the BLE but still plenty of time between the connection events to be used by ZigBee if needed. So that was all for the second demonstration and let's move back to the presentation. So the last comment on the concurrent mode firmware architecture principle. If you would have a look in the source code, you would find out that the concurrent mode examples are simply combination of standalone single protocol examples. They are showing the code structure are with the same application architecture and the user can still use just only BLE or just only ZigBee in case he has the concurrent mode stack available. It is not mandatory to operate both at the same time. Thank you very much. I will pass the word back to Paolo. Thank you very much for the very interesting hands-on. So let's go to the takeaways for today. STM32WB is ready for the mass market now. It's a multi-core, multi-protocol STM32 wireless MCU. It can count on ultra-low power DNA based on the STM32L4. It has a rich peripherals 
memory and packages set with a proven radio and certified protocol stacks. And it allows to have a very low BOM cost thanks to integrated balloon, USB crystal S, and many other features. The growing portfolio with new parts and modules are coming very soon. The best in class training materials with a wide offer of massive online open courses available today. And finally, the best in class STN32 ecosystem. Everything to get started available now. Let me give you a last very important message. STN32 goes wireless with you. Thanks to the huge investment ST is doing on the STN32 WX series. 2.4 gigahertz, Bluetooth, ZigBee, thread, point to point, point to point, to point or mesh. Ultra wideband technology, thanks to the latest acquisition of Omlox. Sub gigahertz protocol with the incoming launch of the worldwide first LoRa system on chip. And finally, narrowband IoT and LTE modules offering coming soon as well. All enriched by strong RAF capabilities with strong focus on security and large offering in terms of flash, RAM, and packages. 10 years lifetime commitment renewed every year, no matter what. All supported by the best in class ecosystem ever. Thank you all. Thank you, Vit. Hope this webinar has found your interest. 